Milwaukee, there was a great recession in 1975, and I maintain that Milwaukee never recovered. Mm. And uh, so basically all of these politicians are just covering up and uh, gatekeeping and keep draining us uh, for our tax dollars and then hoping that everything will stay afloat. But uh, it's a very broke town. Hey, it's Jordan. I am in Flint, Michigan, East Palestine, Ohio, Tumwa, Iowa. Please support the only independent outlet on the ground covering what the corporate media covers up. Hey, it's Jordan. We are in Milwaukee, and we are uh, in the midst of our three-state swing state tour. And when I come uh, to these cities, I don't want to talk to political pundits. I don't want to talk to wealthy white people blowing smoke out of their ass on uh, TV news sets. I want to talk to the people, and uh, I want to talk to activists who have been fighting the good fight. Uh, so that's why I got connected with you, Brian Verdeen. You've been an activist here your whole life, basically, yes. uh, on pretty much every terrible thing <laughs> going on. Uh, I mean, dating back to even the Vietnam, it seems. Yep. Um, so I wanted to talk to you because obviously Wisconsin is critical. Uh, I could, between Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin, could decide who's in the White House. Uh, but before we get to that, I want to start with some of the important things going on here that are not really being discussed in the, in the media. Uh, like, like the rest of the Midwest, seems like Wisconsin's uh, Milwaukee gentrification is on steroids. Uh, the police budget seems to keep increasing, education decreasing. Uh, what are some of the things people should know going on here? Well, I think you hit the big three on the head. Uh... Yeah, um, police are a big issue. I think they uh, take up 47% of the city's budget. Wow. And we just had a big gathering at City Hall uh, last week on the uh, mayor's proposed budget where they're calling for an increase in the police budget. And so many of us pushed back on that and said, you know, police don't stop uh, crime, but uh, jobs do. And so how about getting the business of creating more jobs? And furthermore, since Biden was gonna be in town the next day to demand a federal jobs relief, uh, an emergency jobs relief program for our city. So it's, uh, it's, I call Milwaukee the laboratory for repression. You know, we're first in the nation for a whole lot of stuff. For, uh, Including incarceration. In Wisconsin, the highest incarceration rate in the country. And certainly uh, Milwaukee has everything to do with that. Mm -hmm. And a Democrat is the mayor. It's a Democrat city. Right. Right. And overwhelmingly uh, controlled by Democrats and the uh, Common Council and the County Board. So, uh, and I keep seeing a pattern in Mich Michigan, Pennsylvania, I mean, you name it. It seems that there's five to ten blocks that look beautiful. You got great new bars and restaurants and sports stadiums. And then you drive like ten minutes away and some of it looks like a war zone. Uh, Yet, so there's money for development. There's money, you know, tax breaks and whatnot that the city is giving out to developers. But there doesn't seem to be enough money for food programs, education. Can you kind of talk about, you know, the disinvestment, a lot of important things? Yeah, we have uh, parties on the east and uh, stress on the west uh, side of town. So, uh, you know, a lot of it has to do with apartheid economics right here in Milwaukee. And you know, it's been, I've maintained that. What do you was, call it? Apartheid? Apartheid economics. You know, wow. um, Milwaukee, there was a great recession in 1975. And I maintain that Milwaukee never recovered. Yeah. And uh, so basically all of these politicians are just covering up and uh, gatekeeping and keep draining us uh, for our tax dollars and then hoping that everything will stay afloat. But uh it's a very broke town when it comes to our citizens, you know, it's uh, probably one of the highest poverty rates in the country. And is what, what is uh, the reason that the mayor uh, is citing for increasing the police budget? If you're already at nearly 50 percent of the budget is on police. Is there a massive crime wave here? Well, there's a lot more crime than, than is actually reported, that's for sure. Um, but again, the uh, whole misnomer that somehow police stop crime and, you know, it's the old fear of instill fear in the people and then they're going to want more police instead of instilling hope and jobs and and more creative thinking about uh, how to especially how to attract and uh, uh, go after our young folks in terms of uh, opportunity you know mm -hmm. and COVID had a dramatic impact impact i think on our young people here 
If you notice, the, a lot of the crime that's going on right now is like 17, 18, 19 year olds, 20 year olds. And those would have been the young people that probably didn't turn on their computers when there was homeschooling or didn't have that structure that's built in by actually attending and going to school. So I think uh, we got a lot to uh, try to recover right here in Milwaukee. Uh, and it's really something because you hear so often from, you know, CNN, CNBC, Democrats in the White House, Republicans when they're in there. Oh, the economy's booming. The stock market's hitting records and GDP's up and the unemployment number's low. But I come to these cities and it's like, it's booming in a few blocks, for a few blocks. Right. It's, it's really a tale of two cities. It really is. And uh, after I leave here, in fact, I have to go to the grocery store and it's one of my least favorite things to do. The prices are so ungodly high. Um, but my sister's coming to town, so I have to feed her. And uh, so unfortunately, I have to go to the grocery store today and just uh, watch my pocketbook. Uh, now, in uh, obviously, Wisconsin's a swing state. Milwaukee is probably why Hillary Clinton lost in 2016. She under, underperformed in Milwaukee, particularly among black voters. Biden only won in 2020 the state by 20,000 votes. Right. So this could be literally thousands of votes that makes the difference. Um, we're talking Milwaukee, but statewide, what would you say is kind of the temperature? The polls seem to be coin toss, but obviously parts of Wisconsin are very red cities like this more blue but it seems to me immigration is a big issue right. uh, it also seems to me that um a lot of young people are disenchanted because of the gaza issue yeah i think uh, i i suspect that uh harris will win wisconsin because of this guy hubdi that's running for senator he's so horrible He's uh, insulted every uh, every different uh, group in this in the state, the farmers, the seniors, the overweight people. And he's running against Senator Baldwin. Baldwin. And uh, we've had the pleasure of picketing her apartment as well in Madison because, uh, you know, her along with Biden and our congressperson here, Gwen Moore, it took them seven months uh, to follow Biden's lead and finally call for a ceasefire. So that kind of leadership uh, really sucks. And um uh, in fact, we picketed uh, Congressman Moore's uh, offices and her home in hopes to, uh, you know, get them to uh, take a moral position if that's possible. But so I, I have a suspicion that Harris will probably barely squeak out uh, Wisconsin. I talked to uh, Pastor Lewis from Souls to the Polls uh, just the other day, and I told him he better get uh, Harris to the hood because, as, as you mentioned, uh, Hillary lost. She didn't come to Wisconsin. And that might have made the difference, uh, but who knows? Maybe it wouldn't have made no difference at all, whether it was uh, or Hillary or uh, or Trump. Because mm -hmm. they're all ironclad to Israel, you know, they're all uh, ironclad, so. And, uh, you know, obviously the media is focused mostly on Michigan when it comes to Arab Americans, but there is a decent population of Arab Americans here in Wisconsin, not to mention a lot of young voters. That's one of their top issues. Right. So if she doesn't win, would you say that's that would be a big reason? Probably. Why? I would think so. There's there's a tremendous movement on our uh, campuses uh, for free Palestine, for divestiture. And uh, these young folks might remind me of myself so much. They're going to take a very principled stand, a very uh, uh, moral stand, and they're not going to vote for uh, Harris because she's ironclad with Israel, too. So. Uh, you know, God bless them. <laughs> and you were saying to me, if, if you could tell the audience before we started, that uh, she kind of reminds you a little bit about Hubert Humphrey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, again, when I sp speak on this, a lot of people are too young to even know about this. But, uh, you know, Vice President Humphrey uh, uh, to uh, Lyndon Bombs Johnson, he didn't do well enough to distance himself from his... Uh, support for the you know the war in vietnam and consequently he lost and we got stuck with tricky dicky so uh <laughs> but then i also remind folks that we were able to survive survive uh, nixon too uh which was actually uh pretty dark days for the united states so mm -hmm. and um you know i see young people too even before even before um october 7th a lot of young people were really becoming fed up with the democratic party because a lot of them held their nose and voted for Trump, uh, Biden in right. 2020. Right, right. But they were promised, you know, $15 minimum wage, a public option. And 
right away, those things, he moonwalked away from those things. And I think, uh, do you feel like at a certain point, you can't keep telling people this is the most important election of our lifetime, but then very little materially changes. Right, right. Well, you know, in this case here, I'm, it, you, it might surprise you to know that I'm, I'm, <laughs> I was trying so hard to vote for Harris. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I still haven't decided. And uh, wishing the hell that they would give us some kind of signal, uh, meaning uh, Harris, that uh, she's not going to follow the same uh, ironclad approach to Israel. But, uh, you know, Trump is threatening to round up uh, people that are here so-called illegally and, you know, round them up in mass. I don't know what that's going to look like, just breaking down doors like some stormtroopers. Uh, he's he's uh, talking about attacking the nuclear sites in Iran. And more, and as of yesterday, as of yesterday, he said he wanted to uh, call out the National Guard and maybe even the Army on us so-called uh, radicals. So, so uh, he really uh, looks like, talks like, and smells like fascism. So it seems like you're either going to get a president that's out and out fascist or one that supports fascism uh, uh, in the Middle East. So uh, it's it's a really terrible situation. Why do you? Because this is not your first rodeo. You've been active for 40, 50 years. Yes. Why do you, if Trump's so bad, which I would agree with, shouldn't shouldn't Harris and Democrats be cleaning his clock? They should be. Yeah, they should be. They, uh, and allegedly now she's coming out with some new uh, proposals, you know, that are going to uh, benefit black males in particular and the black community in general. Uh, uh, I guess neither one of them have the courage to actually out and out call for reparations. But Lastly, before it monsoons, because it's raining, um, what should people know about Wisconsin? If she wins, why do you think she would win? And if she loses, why why would she lose? I think she'll win because of, the, uh, cause of this Hubby guy. He's so bad and he's a, a Republican, so people are going to vote against him. And since they'll be in the Democratic Party column, then they're going to go ahead and vote for Harris. So you don't see a lot of like, we'll vote for, we'll vote against that Republican Senate candidate, but we'll do third party for president. That's a possibility. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But no, if people are going to vote for Jill Stein, uh, uh, they're not going to vote for uh, Baldwin either. Right. They'll just uh, probably leave that one blank. So right. if Harris wins, uh, It'll be probably because she was able to finally make some inroads into the uh, black community. She certainly has the support of the leading immigration rights uh, organization, mm -hmm. uh, Voces de la Frontera, mostly because, again, uh, Trump is that bad. And we're aware that he wants to round up people and, uh, you know, send them back to wherever they came from. So, uh, And if she loses? If she loses, then uh, we just got to uh, the, this all about the, it's always, always been about the movement. I meant to bring that up when the. Uh, the other citizen was here that is, it always gets back to the movement. Like I say, we were able to survive uh, uh, the Nixon era and we'll survive uh, the Trump era too, although uh, it might be a little rougher. You know? mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Okay, man. Thank you. Appreciate it.